Hello and welcome. While Ukrainian advances on the front line are fairly slow, there are two good pieces of news for Ukraine. A, they are likely going to get attack camps. Those are the 300 kilometer range missiles for the HIMARS system and the M270s. And it seems like several hundred new main battle tanks are on the horizon for Ukraine as well. This and more in this situation report. The attacks on Ukrainian cities are continuing almost daily. Almost daily, there's air alarm and attacks with cruise missiles, with ballistic missiles or with Shahid drones. Uh, lately, the last reports were that another time, six Kinshal missiles were used on Kiev, but Ukraine claims they shot them all down. The Russians are also starting to deploy nuclear weapons to bring nuclear weapons into Belarus. This is part of the deal they made with Lukashenko. The nuclear weapons stay under Russian control and all of this, while it is a gesture, shouldn't be considered as some kind of real escalation because they don't add any any capability to the Russian armed forces with Kaliningrad here in the in um, further west, their range isn't even really extended f by deploying them in Belarus. It's more; to, it has more to be understood that this is another sign of the Russians taking over control in Belarus. On the eastern front, we have reports about continued attacks by the Russians uh, in Krimina and somewhat further north here along the line, but none of those attacks seem to be in any size and there are no reports of successes that they supposedly have achieved. Further south, we have the usual attacks, Bilohorivka, Spirne occasionally, Vesele is mentioned. We also have attacks in, in Orikhovo, Vasilivka, all by the Russians. The Ukrainians are also attacking though. We have um, Ukrainian attacks in Klishivka being reported. They gained some ground in, uh, in, in Klishivka too, but here in Berkhivka they are still attacking in that direction and there are indications that they gained some ground in the direction of Yahidne. Further south we have Ukrainian attacks in Klishivka, in uh, Kurdyumivka in this direction they are being reported and in Osarianivka which is down here. So in this area and here are also Ukrainian attacks. The Russians were also attacking in Klishivka. Um, they must have attacked somewhere west here because the Ukrainian general staff were, was reporting attacks in the direction of Stupochki. Uh, with this here, it seems likely that the attacks were more or less in that direction here. Uh, further south, fighting is continuing in Avdivka. We have reports of um, Russian attacks at Novosilivka up here at Stepove, which is here. We have um, Krasnohorivka is being mentioned as an attack, as a, an axis of attack, Marinka and Novo, Novo Mikhailivka. The, the Russians are reporting that the Ukrainians themselves also attack in Stepove, so probably in the direction of um, Krasnohorivka here, and they are attacking in the direction of Pervomaiske, so somewhere in this axis. Um, Telegram uh, Vorgonzo is reporting slight gains by the Ukrainians here. They close to Nevelske. Let me quickly look it up here because somehow it was... Um, yeah, I found it here. They were attacking there and took several positions. Um, so here in this area, they attacked. Vogonzo is also reporting Russian advances in Marinka, but um, it's obviously more trustworthy for a pro-Russian military blogger to report their own setbacks than their own successes. Um, just This just from a uh, from, uh, source criticism point of view. Generally though, the area here is somewhat um, lackluster, the activity, so the, the um, changes in, in in control are not really of any size. There's also another report about a Russian attack here at Staro Mikhailivka. So this action, this area is also under combat, but the overall the attacks are not of the intensity that um, they have any bigger significance in the overall picture. Obviously, they cause losses, they cause uh, lives being lost. Uh, this shouldn't be. I don't intend to downplay this, but over the, for the overall picture of the war, uh, the 
this is clearly a sideshow as of now at least when we took take the overall picture on the southern front there are reports that um, by the russians that um, the ukrainians gained one kilometer i don't see no it was uh, my mistake uh, ukrainian sources were claiming they gained one kilometer at vulida i don't f i didn't find any sources for that so it might be uh, wrong we what we do have both sides confirming that vuledar there are battles going on so both sides are fighting here veluka novosilka the area is still one of the uh, focus one of the main axes of attacks by the ukrainians the Ukrainians are advancing in the direction of Novodonetsk. Here, yeah, advancing in the Novodonetsk area. We have it here being reported freshly. So they are attacking here, over here, and gaining some ground. And we have reports that the um, that Wargonzo again is t telling that they are advancing further west, I think, though. And what we have here is we, we also have claims by the Russians that the Ukrainians reached Uroshine. I've heard some reports that supposedly they already captured it, but I am not completely sure. So it just seems that they might have advanced a, a few hundred meters further south from, from Makarivka, where we have confirmation that they are still in control. So while the fighting is continuing, continuing while the attempts to advance are continuing the overall success is limited as of now um, war gonzo was reporting successes by the ukrainians in the direction of uh, doroshnyanka this should be here so according to him they were advancing here south of Huliapole. we should have it here somewhere here it is um, the enemy gained uh, managed to take new positions so according to him they advanced further south here he's also talking about gains in the direction of Robotune so south of Mala Tokmachka this is the area where the Bradley parking lot happened so the Ukrainians are attacking are have resumed their attacks here and at least according to Wargonzo they gained some ground here in as we can see um, they they are uh, gaining ground here and we have reports by Riba also of attacks and at least if we were to believe the Riba attack the Riba map we would assume that they actually advanced um, roughly until here if we take the the map for granted further west the reports are that the Ukrainians took the town of um, Piak um, Piatik let me just Piatik Chatki Piatu Chatki Piatu Chatki according to Rebar it's already captured and they are attacking in the direction of um, Shere Bianski Bianki uh, the attacks are continuing here so we have small gains in different areas but overall it's uh, at best one town liberated over the last few days not too much uh, gained ground for the Ukrainians. On the Dnipro, there were reports about uh, landing attempts both here at uh, Nova Kachovka as well as in the direction of Hula Pristan, Huli Pristan, Hula Pristan here. Um, there were videos of fighting happening there. Later, there was report no, it wasn't an, an, att an attempt to cross the Dnipro. It was just drones that were fired upon. So that seems to have actually been the case. There are also reports that the Russians start to re-establishing their defensive positions on the shores of the Dnipro with the water um, with the water levels going down. It obviously allows the Russians to return and retake positions here and start fortifying them again. Generally, when we talk about the uh, when we want to summarize the overall situation on the front line we have uh, colonel general sirsky the commander of the ground forces of ukraine he's saying the attacks around bakhmut have successes but less in regards to the ground gained but more when it comes to fixing troops according to him the russians are sending some of their highest value troops to bakhmut to reinforce the positions here and prevent the ukrainians from advancing it's a clear sign what the ukrainian attacks attempt here Bakhmut has gained so much value and so much importance after being captured um, during an eight-month-long uh, fight. 
Should they be forced to abandon it? Should it be recaptured by the Ukrainians in a timely manner? It would be a disaster for the public, in the eyes of the public. So the Russians are basically being forced to reinforce the position, even though the strategic value is limited. And um, that allows the Ukrainians to fairly cheaply fix troops there that will not be able to be used in any other area. There are also reports that heavy rainfall has started or has been happening over the last few days that slowed down Ukrainian counterattacks. We had the Russians saying that the the rain here, for instance, south of Orekhiv, did not allow the Ukrainians to advance further south. The Ukrainians seem to use the time less for ground attacks. While the attacks are happening, they are usually with fairly small groups and just a few pickup trucks, a few APCs and maybe two or three tanks from what we see so far. So no big pushes. What the Ukrainians do seems to be that they try to draw out the Russian electronic warfare and artillery units by conducting those small attacks and then uh, fight them, uh, uh, try to destroy them with precision artillery. We've seen pictures and videos in the past of, um, uh, for instance, Panzerhaubitze 2000, the German, uh, the the German. How it's us destroying Russian artillery and electronic warfare equipment. Last time we've seen HIMARS being employed against Mr. S, the Russian self-propelled howitzers there as well. So while Ukraine doesn't seem to advance uh, too much as of now, it seems at least from what we view is that they, the, the volume of their attacks is somewhat limited, uh, big enough to gain at least occasionally some ground, but the employment of heavy weaponry has been limited to a certain extent while they focus on counter-battery fire. Um, the um, electronic warfare is, is particularly important there. We, we have consistent reports about the effectiveness of Russian electronic warfare units that are supposedly one of the reasons for the uh, high setback disaster would be a little too much, but for the big setback that happened at the so-called Bradley parking lot south of um, Mala Okmachka. Um, we also have some pictures from the Kachovka Reservoir. We see it, how it's looking right now. You see the water going down, but the really interesting part is A, obviously what we would expect. It's basically a marshland now, water and so on, but here you can see how the ground looks. So even if this ground gets solid, it doesn't offer any protection whatsoever. There's no cover, there's no concealment to advance over this over kilometers and more kilometers would um, be extremely challenging for the Ukrainians as they are basically in the open and the Russians will see them coming for miles on upon miles and that will make it fairly difficult. So the actual chance of crossing the Karovka reservoir now as it's draining seems to be at least fairly limited. To the, we have some information about the Russian force generation. Uh, the, according to the Ukrainian military intelligence, the GUR, the, it is saying that the Storm Z units are being abandoned. Those were the, the convict units that were being used as expendable infantry. And according to their estimates, the combat value of those units have been so low that they are now being merged with volunteer units. That seems to either be that they are already expended to an extent that they don't justify their own units anymore, or that the uh, Russian government, the Russian military believes that the combat effectiveness will increase if they are, no, if they are employed in a different way. Uh, in the political sphere, we have some news that the presidents of South Africa, Zambia, the Comores, the Republic of Congo, Senegal, the Prime Minister of Egypt, and a Ukrainian and a, and a Ugandan representative were in Kiev to start a uh, peace initiative to to see what options are they are they have left for saint petersburg now but it needs to be said clearly that there is no chance for peace as of now uh, both sides both positions are too far away um, that there is any chance for a negotiated settlement as of now until one side either achieves a big breakthrough or the exhaustion is reaching to a point where um, willingness to accept setbacks has been achieved by the other side. And we have some news here from Russia. 
This is um, the Russian Radio Free Europe, Radio Liberty station. And according to them, there are deputies from Moscow and St. Petersburg that signed an open letter demanding that Russia is returning to its pre-war borders, basically uh, um, withdrawing from Ukraine. Now, this is more or less without relevance. Obviously, this will not have an effect on the Russian government, but it seems worth to be mentioning that there is at least some brave resistance to what is happening in Russia, as those letter, those signatories are probably taking a considerable risk, at the very least, to their freedom by signing this, um, as it will likely um, be prosecutable by uh, a number of laws that have been tightened or created during this war by by the Russian government. And um, we have more news about international support. We have the um, we have Spain is sending 20 M113 APCs and four Leopard 2A4s that they have refurbished. So four new MBTs, four new Leopards are coming to Ukraine. The Netherlands and Denmark have now agreed to train F-16 pilots. We don't have numbers about the number that will be donated, though. And Belgium is sending more M113 as well. And the big news is, one of the big news is this year. This is the National Defense Authorization, Authorization Act. And according to it, uh, on page 403, it says that the committee intends that not less than 80 million US dollars he, he be used for the procurement of army tactical missile system attackums for the for the armed forces of Ukraine. So the so-called 300 kilometer uh, missile that can be shot, that would be able to reach the Crimean bridge as well from Ukraine's control territory is supposedly at least it's planned for Ukraine. From my understanding of the proceedings, this is just a, a drawn plan, not officially sanctioned yet, but at least it shows that attackums are on the horizon. And that was more or less a question of time after after the United Kingdom did the first step and handed over storm shadows. Once that red line was crossed, it was likely that more will follow, like, U like Ukraine received Western MBTs as soon as the, Britain, the Brits again were the first to deliver modern MBTs with the Challenger 2. Uh, another big news, and maybe even bigger, as this is just an extension of their capabilities, is the Israeli news, the news we have from Israel. Uh, Israel has uh, the Merkava tank that it designed, that it builds for its own use for its own armed forces. It was never sold abroad and all the regular units of the Israeli armed forces are now equipped with the Merkava 4. The Merkava 5 is about to be employed and is about to be put into service. And even the reserve units are all now um, equipped with Merkava 3, which means that a lot of Merkava 2 and 3 are no longer of use. According to Israeli media, they plan to sell them but didn't find a buyer and it was up uh, the consideration to even scrap them. And now the media is that the government is in, a, is in um, close proximity of signing to uh, signing export treaties with two nations to export and one media said hundreds of tanks the other one says roughly 200 so we should expect more or less at least 200 Merkavas being handed over the interesting part is two buyers one of them in Europe at least the the rumors are the other one is Morocco now this is important because the um, this will this can only mean new tanks for Ukraine. As the Israeli media was saying the, that the need, they will need um, permission from the US to export, which pro because they probably use US components so the US can block the sale. And at, at a time like this, the US will not give permission to export the tanks to, to just say a name, for instance, Serbia, which might want to replace its M84s and scrap them or even give them to Russia for that matter. No, you, the US will make sure that those tanks will either go directly to Ukraine, which seems unlikely because I don't think the Israeli government wants to go that step to directly deliver MBTs. So they will either go to another country that then can hand over Ukraine some of its tank uh, as it has gapped the, the capability, um, as it has 
prevented a capability gap or there are some new rumors that maybe the another nation might buy it and then hand it over to Ukraine even though that seems highly unlikely because uh, Israel likely doesn't want to see its MBTs fighting Russian tanks in Russia to prevent diplomatic problems with Russia and whether they sell them directly or let's say to France and France hands them over to Ukraine wouldn't make, make much of a difference. But regardless, we can assume that it's sure that they will be given to a country that then will allow other tanks to be exported to Ukraine. Morocco, for instance, still has T-72 and has already delivered T-72 to Ukraine one of the few uh, non-Western nations to actively supply weapons to Ukraine through the Czech Republic. They still have some left. They also have M80, M48 and M60, American ones that could be given to Ukraine as well. Uh, another candidate that is rumored might be Poland. They still have PT-91 Twardy, the um, Polish development from the T-72, and they have still Leopard 2A4 that should either be modernized to the Leopard 2 PL version or will be taken out of service with the introduction of the new Abrams and K2s. So regardless, um, it is mo it is basically sure that this will mean additional tanks for Ukraine, whether directly or indirectly, but the US will not allow uh, a sale of tanks right now that is not going to help and, and providing help for Ukraine. Finally, we have a short video. Now, I was told that the bloom here indicates that it's more from May than from this month, but we can see here how a um, usage of demining equipment works. Here we see the M58 MICLIC. That is the, a, um, a rocket launched that's pulling a string of explosive after it. I think we see it in a moment. Let's just move forward here. Yeah, there it goes. You see how it drags the the thread after it, basically, and that thread is filled with explosives that, after hitting the ground, will blow up and create a, a path through a minefield of uh, 100 meters length and 7 meters in width um, by simply w um, blowing up mines with the overpressure. Now, this is supposedly from the Saporizhia region. I was I didn't find a geolocalization here, but I said this seems to be not from the past few days, but more or less a month old. But this is an example how um, what was given to Ukraine to provide them with capability to um, clear passes through minefields. Um, that was it from me for now. For, for now in this situation report, if you liked it, please hit the thumbs up button, leave a comment for the algorithm um, where you think those tanks will lead to. Leave us your input. That really helps with the algorithm. And if you're new here, I would like to, to invite you to subscribe and hit the bell icon, even though my English has been worse today than it usually is. So I apologize for that. Um, this channel is only possible because of the support from viewers like you. If you'd like to support the channel, you can do so by the means in the description. Thank you very much to everyone already supporting the channel. That's it from me for now. Thank you for watching and I'll be back.